All right, so the Pran and Killing. Um, you are just seen it on you just seen it on the news. This is Channel Two News. Um, as you've seen, doctors are using it. Mm-hmm. So hospitals, nurses, doctors, all right, has taken to Pran and Killing. But they've been practicing touch therapy or the healing touch, as they refer to it as, which is Reiki, in hospitals, in over 3,000 hospitals around the country already. All right? This has been done for over 20 years. All right? This has been done for over 20 years. So what we're looking at is what we're doing, you know, now can actually create a career even in the medical field because nurses and doctors are doing this all right so this is what we're talking about developing your own clinic as they would say your own facility all right and as we went over the class um last month we talked about the fact of going to the secretary of state once you go to the Secretary of State, you want to do an unincorporated nonprofit, an unincorporated nonprofit, and you will probably want it to be some type of ministry, outreach ministry, all right? By utilizing that terminology, you are tax exempt, all right? And the fact is that it's nonprofit. Not only can you ask for donations, free will offerings, suggested um, donations, uh, you can even ask for payments, all right? Even as a nonprofit organization, that's a, that is a phallus, a fallacy to think that a nonprofit cannot ask for donations. You see um, the Girl Scout selling damn Girl Scout cookies all the time. And what they ask for, if you ask them how much is them damn cookies, what they going to tell you? <laughs> um, yeah, that's $4 a box. <laughs> right? That's $4 a box. So you got to give them $4. That ain't no donation as a nonprofit. <laughs> that's them saying, now nah, you need to give me my money. <laughs> 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 right? So Absolutely. you can do the same thing, right? You can do the same thing with a nonprofit. You can ask for, you know, payments. I mean, you know, the churches get away with it, you know, because they do. They say that they are asking for donations. They pass the plate around. So you just know it's time to give, you know. Um, if you was in my church when I was growing up, um, my cousin would have told you, uh, yes, um, uh we don't mind the jingles, but we'd rather have that which falls. <laughs> <laughs> in, in other words, don't be giving up no pennies, dimes, quarters, nickels. We want, we want them dollars, five, tens, twenties, and more. Matter of fact, we like the envelopes. <laughs> you know when you go, there's going to be more than one, five, ten, twenty dollars. All right, we want the envelope. Throw your name up on it, and we throw that. You know, we put that to the side. You know, for the prayer um, um, meeting. You know, meters and, and the missionaries can get together and pray over that for you. <laughs> you know, so um, that's what we're looking at here. All right, the second one. All right, we'll be talking about. All right, we can go on and look at the second one now. And the second one is a little bit more detailed as far as showing you an actual practice. My wife and I is going to show you the way that we do it um, tonight also, and she'll give you some of her experiences of when we have done it, Um, you know, so. All right. So let me put it up. Here we go. Um, That's the second link, so everybody can click onto the second links. All right. And you can skip the first two minutes. 
And when you get to two, you'll see them start to start to practice. That's where you want to start at.
All right, did everybody get a chance to see how she did it from the front as well as, as Tomas turned around, how she was able to do it from the back? I did, yeah. I did, yeah. All right. Yes. All right, so um, me, me and my wife is going to show you um, another example and some of the things in which that was not spoken of. Peace, everybody. Peace. Peace. Got it. Peace. Right. Um, let's get this point. I lean right now, six to go get a, a plant. And this is a um a aloe vera. All right, so the way that I was taught 20 some odd, 20, almost 25 years ago, we would start out on the right side. What Stephen Cole just did, he said, now you can start in the middle. But we used to start on the right side. But this is essentially what he's talking about. And notice we're using a plant. They were using right. water. They were using water. Can you use fire. Um, you can, if you don't have any of those things, then you can also visualize the energy being dissipated, in, you know, in your hand. So there's multiple ways you can do it. Your spirit may also give you some other alternatives, too. And I spoke about some of these alternatives in the last class. Here we start at the top of the head. You just come down. Flip three times. All right?
All right, what this is, is sweeping, all right? Now, what they was talking about with scanning is you walking, you can be 12 feet away from the person, all right? 12 feet away from the person, and you walk into their auric cell, and you can feel the subtle changes because your hands and your fingertips are activated. So you'll feel the subtle change as you walk further into their auric field. The average person auric field only stretches about arm length out, which is about three feet in front of them. So you take the hands and go around in a circle. That would be three feet in diameter. All right? Now, what it is, is that when you practice the 6363, 7171, or empty retention breath, your auric field can extend and expand to 15 feet. Yeah, to 15 feet instead of five, instead of three feet. So you become more magnetized than the average person. All right? So I'm going to show you an energizing technique. All right? Being that I'm left handed, my left hand is the dominant hand, my right hand is the receiver. And at the same time, I'm still doing the 6363-7171 or empty retention breath. And in advanced printing healing, you can the color that you want to project upon the person so they can do and be healthy. Um, the color would be white so that it's purified. It also helps to remove negative blockages and entities from the auric field. So you can project into the person's auric field or gold, which helps with ex, um, ex, more extensive generating healing energy. Or you can do green, which also helps with purifying and also with healing. All right, so I'm doing green.
Now she'll tell you what she experienced. Um, Eileen may have um, told y'all a remedy for this, but I felt like when he was doing the front, I felt like I was having a tendency to sway. I felt, wished I, at times I wished I was laying down because I was relaxed and comfortable. Um, so I just remembered to ground myself in my legs. I remember when he was scanning the back area, I felt like a pain in my left eye, which I hadn't even felt. So I'm like, okay, I need to make sure that I work on that area because I do wear glasses. Um, and then also to my grandmother, she's blind too. So I don't know what that energy was coming from, but I did feel a pain in my left eye, um, which I don't feel now. Um, and then when the green energy was coming, I felt warm, like really, really hot around the neck. Um, so that's that's what I felt. But that's deep that it was on TV, y'all. <laughs> Ain't it? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Goddess, I see you being your hair all the time like me. <laughs> I, I, I love I love it. <laughs> that it's yeah. natural and I can do anything I want with it. I, I, I like it now. Uh-huh. <laughs> so therapeutic. Exactly. Yeah, that's praying and healing too. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Like um when um as y'all probably already know, but y'all know how cats will rub their hair around they around your body, the lower part of your legs and stuff. They also draw in the negative energy or draw in the energy too, the excess energy. Yeah. Ooh. Violin is Finish sending me healing energy to my eyes. Also, too, family, make sure you're doing it. Like in the morning when you wake up or before you go to bed, and you'll notice that your body will be making all sorts of noises, you know, so make sure you're giving your energy to yourself because we always are giving our energy to others. So make sure you have you make time for yourself. Um, and then also it was one other thing I wanted to say. Mm. Writing down your dreams, that's a good one. And also teaching the youth. I just had access to a little girl. She was, and I showed her. Um, sorry, y'all. And I showed her the energy that she had on her hands. And we just simply told her to breathe in deeply and to put her energy close, her hands close but not to touch, and pull them apart. Just and slowly was better. The slow as you could go, the best it was the better. And she was like, I can't believe that, you know. And I was telling her how she could heal with that energy. So make sure you um you're telling the youth too when you get an opportunity. Eileen just got finished um healing my eyes. I appreciate you. I needed it. Peace, <laughs> <laughs> y'all. Peace. Peace. All right, so we get to the presentation now. Can everybody see the screen? Um, I just um, I feel like, like, like a bad like um, like um, yeah, now. Yeah, now. Can we see it now? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so as you see, so thank you. Um, as you see. When you're doing praying and killing, your fingertips and the center of your palms is supposed to be activated. Now, the way to sensitize that or sensitize your hands so you can scan the inner aura, sweeping and cleansing, general and localized, um, energizing with prana, hand chakra technique to draw the prana and to project the prana and then stabilizing the projected prana. These are the five principles in which that you can do in any printing healing technique or method or situation, all right? So one of the ways to sensitize the hands is the way that my wife just taught y'all is simply by drawing the hands together and pulling them apart. And it's focusing on the center of your palm and your fingertips. Mm-hmm. 
Right. Like once you feel the sensitizing of the fingertips, as well as also of the palm of the hands, that's what you're doing is sensitizing those areas. What you can do then is, like you said, the average person in auric field is about three feet from them. And this is normally how the auric field looks to the right. You have an outer auric field, a health auric field, and an inner auric field. And that inner auric field is known as your etheric body, which is about two to six inches above your physical body. Right? Whenever you feel leaks and holes within a person's auric field and how you know you can feel them is because you will feel like a cool sensation through your palm chakra or fingertips as you coming down, sweeping their auric, um, sweeping the person's auric field. As you see here, she has some entanglement within the auric field, which basically is a cause of a health situation or problem. So you can project the energy red, as the red color is the color of the root chakra, and red is the root chakra or base chakra, and basically um, is at the base of the spine. It symbolizes vitality, courage, self-confidence. Um, the related organs is the kidneys, the bladder, um, the vertebrate columns, as well as the hips, the legs, also related to the to the chakra. The adrenal glands, all right, the adrenal glands. Now, the associated problems is um, constipation, diarrhea, pals, um, Crohn's disease, cold fingers and toes, uh, frequency of urination, um, hypertension, which is high blood pressure, kidney stones, impotency, um, hip problems, legs, and feet, all right? Um, pink can also be used here, which is a more gentle energy is required. Um, personality traits, um, like you said, is courageous, confident, um, humanistic, um, strong will, spontaneous, honest, ext um, extroverted, extroverted, Red is also the self-awareness. It's the area of um, survival and stability and your place on this earth. The color red provides the power for the earth and gives energy on all levels. It connects us to our physical body. Everything that is to be commenced needs the life vitality of the red color. All right? So... The positive aspects, like we said, is security, courage, strong um, strength of will, pioneering. Negative aspects of the color red is insecurity, self-pitying, aggression, and fearful. All right? So if a person is constipated, they have diarrhea, they have piles, um, colitis, or Crohn's disease, or whatever the case is, hypertension, you can project the color red upon them because that means that they have a problem with their base or root chakra. All right. You have orange. The color orange is the sacral chakra, which fit, which relates to feeling and sexuality. When it's open, your feelings flow freely and express without being over emotional. You are open to intimacy, and you can um, be passionate and lively, right? You have no problems dealing with your sexuality. Um, if you tend to be stiff, unemotional, have a poker face, the sacral or uh, chakra is underactive, all right? You're not very open to people. If your um, chakra is overactive, you tend to be emotional all the time. All right, you feel emotionally attached to people, and you can and you can be very sexual. So orange governs the sacral chakra, um, situated in the lower abdomen. Matter of fact, is about an inch below the navel chakra. All right, and you take that area and go well, an inch or two, and you go around the belt meridian. It will correlate to what is called the sacral bone, which is an area that sits right above the crack of your behind which is, looks like is the base of the spinal area right above the caucus and is a downward triangular shape 
area, bone area, where the Kundalini energy dwells at. That's the abode of the Kundalini. All right, so orange governs the sacral chakra situated in the lower abdomen and its happiness, sense, resourcefulness. Um, the related organs is the uterus, the large bowels, um, you know, uh, which is the large intestines, uh, prostate, ovaries, testes. In the fetus, the testes develop in the lower abdomen, um, thus linking the sacral chakra energy, then descending to the strotum by birth for the males. Um, the endocrine glands is the ovaries and testes for the male. So ovaries for the women, testes for the male or man. Associated problems is premenstrual syndrome, problems with the menstrual flow, um, fibroids, um, tumors, um, ovarian cysts, um, irritable bowel syndrome, endometriosis, um, um, tri um, um, trisius, trisius, uh, Tescula, uh, disease, prostate disease or problems. Um, the personality trait is enthusiasm, happiness, social, energetic, sporty, um, self-assured, and constructive. Orange is the color of success related to self-respect. Having the ability to give oneself the freedom, ourselves the freedom to be ourselves, and help you to expand your interests and activities. All right, bring joy to our work day and strengths, um, strengthens our appetite for life, and orange is the best emotional stimulant, all right, to connect us to our senses and help to remove um, inhibit, um, inhibitations and make us our independent and social make us independent and social. So positive aspect of orange is sociable, creative, joyous, and independent. Negative aspects of orange is withdrawn, destructive, despondent, and over-dependent. Okay. Make sure that you pay attention to the over, um, the overabundance of these particular colors, which are negative, because the person Oftentimes you can see that they demonstrate these negative qualities, and this is what is really going on with them. All right, next is yellow, and yellow um, is the solar plexus, but here it also correlates to the navel chakra, um, but it's the feel and control and self-sufficient or self-esteem. Uh, when the navel chakra or solar plexus uh, in this case, the solar, when the navel chakra is underactive, you tend to be um, right. You're probably timid and don't um, get what you want. If your chakra is overactive, you're domineering, probably even aggressive. All right. Yellow governs the solar plexus slash navel chakra situated below the ribs. Um, wisdom, clarity, self-esteem. Related organs is the liver, the spleen, the stomach, and the small intestines. All right, endocrine glands, the prostate, um, the um, the pancreas. So she has problems is diabetes, um, pancreatitis, uh, liver disease, peptic ulcers, uh, coliac um, disease, and gallstones. Personality traits is good as well: optimistic, confident, practical, and intellectual. Yellow is the creative color, and it relates to self-worth, how you feel about yourselves or ourselves, and how we feel about how others perceive us. This is the area of the personality, the ego, and the intellect. Give us clarity of thought, increase awareness, and stimulate interest and curiosity. Yellow energy is related to the ability to perceive and understand. The yellow energy connects us to our mental self. All right, positive aspect of yellow, confident, alert, optimistic, and human. Negative aspects of yellow, feeling the inferiority, over-analytical, sarcastic, and pessimistic. So hence the feeling of inferiority, hence goes back to the term saying, what you, you yellow, you chicken, all right, as you heard, I'm sure, your life, um, or your life in some shape, form, or fashion from childhood. All right, here we have green, and green, of course, is the color of the heart chakra. The secondary color is that of pink. 
but it's love, kindness, and affection. When it's open, you are compassionate and friendly. You work harmoniously, you know, in relationships. Um, when your heart chakra is under active, you're cold and distant. Right? This is when you get the people who don't trust somebody, you know, um, and all these other things. If this chakra is overactive, you suffocate a person with your love, and you love probably be quite self for selfish reasons. Green governs the heart chakra, balance, love, self-control. Related organs is the heart and the breasts. Um, endocrine gland is the thymus gland. Associated problems is the heart disease, disease of the immune system, AIDS, um, 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 uh, basically myofibromyalgia, uh, which is uh, also lupus. Uh, other related problems to the immune system, allergies, uh, cancer of the breast, turquoise also has a healing, a healthy effect on the immune system, all right, as well as the throat chakra. Pink is related to the heart chakra, like we said, the color of love. Personality traits, understanding, self-control, adaptable, um, sympathetic, or sympath um, sympathetic, sympathetic, uh, uh, Compassionate, generous, humble, nature loving, and romantic. All right. Green chakra relates to love, self love, the ability to give and take unconditionally. When balanced, you are able to give love and also love and nurture yourselves, ourselves. Help relax muscles, nerves, and thoughts. Cleanses and balances our energy to give a feeling of renewal, peace, and harmony. This one I was using the color green. Um, green connects us to unconditional love and is used for balancing our whole being, right? Positive aspects of green, compassionate, generosity, harmony, balance, loving. Negative aspects of green, indifference, jealousy, um, miserably, or miserably, bitterness. All right, we have blue, which is the color. Expression and talking. Um, when it's open, you have no problems expressing yourself, and you might be um, doing so as an artist. When this chakra is unactive, you tend not to speak much, and you're probably an introvert or shy. All right? And I can tell you, I, I was shy um, up until my first year of college, and then I started doing talent shows, and that was the end of that. All right? Um, now, speaking the truth may block this chakra. Um, if this chakra is overactive, you tend to speak too much, usually to domineer and keep people at a distance. You're a bad listener if this is the case. Blue governs the throat chakra, not health, decisiveness. Related organs, throat and lungs. Endocrine, uh, endocrine glands, your thyroid glands, your parathyroid glands. All right, the upper digestive tract can be affected by the imbalances of this area. Turquoise can be helpful for both the throat and the heart chakra. All right, associated problems, Thyroid problems, overactive, underactive, um, anorexia, um, asthma, bronchitis, hearing problems, tendinitis. Um, you may also be connected to problems with the brow chakra. All right, problems with the upper digestive tract, mouth ulcers, sores, throats, tonsillitis, um, personality traits, loyal, tactful, affectionate, inspiring, inventive, caring, and cautious. Blue is the color of the spirit and relates to self-expression. All right, speech, communication, the ability to communicate our needs and requirements, spirit of truth and purpose. This is a um, mentally relaxing color. It has a passive, passive, pacifying effect on the nervous system and brings great relaxation. Ideal for sleep problems, hyperactive children. Connect us to the holistic think, thinking and thought process and gives us wisdom, clarity, enhancing communication, as well as also speech. So the positive aspects of blue is loyalty, trustworthy, tactful, calm. Negative aspects of blue, unfaithful, um, untrustworthy, self-righteous, and cold. All right? Um, next is indigo, which is the third eye. All right? That's the insight for uh, visualization imagination, your intuitiveness, right? It also says you tend to fantasize a lot. If you're underactive, then you're not a very good at thinking for yourself. You tend to rely upon authorities. And this is much of society. 
their third eyes is not developed. When the third eye is developed, now this when you become a problem because you may be rigid in your thinking, relying on the beliefs too much as when you were um, when that third eye was unactive. You might even get confused easily. Now if your chakra, third eye chakra is overactive, you may live in a world of fantasy too much, right? In excessive cases, hallucinations are possible. All right? This is one of the things that people who are very religious, um, their third eye might be overactive. Right? They have to learn how to have a balance. Indigo governs the brow chakra of third eye in the center of the forehead. Intuition, mysticism, understanding. Related organs, your eyes, your lower head, and sinuses. Endocrine glands and your pituitary gland. Associated problems is tension, headaches, migraines, visual defects, short sightness, which is near sightness, long sightness, which is far sightness, glaucoma, cataracts, um, sinus problems, and ear problems. All right. Um, personality traits, intuitive, fearless, practical, idealistic, wise, and truth seeker. Indigo relates to self-responsibility, being responsible for one's own life, responsible for one's self to follow the soul path and needs and trust in our own intuition, the ability to see things from a higher viewpoint rather than purely from satisfaction of the ego or material comfort. The indigo energy connects us to our unconscious self and give us the experience of being part of the whole universe, strengthen intuition, imagination, psychic powers, and increased dream activity. Right? So positive aspects of indigo. So if somebody comes to you and say that they can't remember their dreams, well, you would shoot them um, with this indigo color into their auric field. All right? You would stand, like you said, with one hand, Receiving, the other hand transmitting, and as you're doing the 6363, 7171, or empty retention breath, you're seeing the color indigo come in through the absorbing hand and transmitting out through your dominant hand. Okay, so um, positive aspects, um, highly intuitive, faithful, clear-sighted, integrity, openly minded or oily minded. Negative aspects, inability to trust, intuition, scattered mind, or as we say, scattered brain, inconsiderate, um, blinkered um, vision. Okay, the next one is violet. Um, which is the crown chakra, is about wisdom being one in the world. When the chakra is open, you are unprejudiced and quite aware of the world and yourself. If you are unactive, you are not very aware of spirituality. You're probably quite rigid in your thinking. If your chakra is overactive, you're probably intellectualized too much. You may be addicted to spirituality and um, are probably ignoring your bodily needs. All right? Violet purple governs the crown chakra at the top of the head. Beautiful creativity, inspiration. Related organs, brain. In the pink gland, pineal gland. Associated problems, depression, Parkinson's disease, schizophrenia, epilepsy, senility, which is actually dementia, um, Alzheimer's, many mental diseases or disorders, uh, confusion and dizziness. Okay. Um, Personality traits, inspirational leaders, kindly and just, humanitarian, self-sacrifice and visionary, creative and strong mentally. Violet relates to self-knowledge, self-awareness, is the union with your higher self and with spirituality and your higher consciousness. Diseases can result in an imbalance of energy in the chakra, either too much or too little. The violet energy connects us to the spiritual self 
bringing guidance, wisdom, and in us strength and, purit- and purifies our thoughts and feelings, giving us the inspiration for all undertaken. Enhance artistic talents and creativity. So the positive aspects of violence, a reverence or reverence for all life, self-sacrifice in service of others, idealism, an ability to see the appropriate route for the benefit of the higher self, the negative aspects of violence, not concern for others, feeling of superiority, lack of contact with reality. So those are the seven major chakras, but there are, of course, other colors. All right, so I'm going to come down. We look at silver and black. Right, brown is used for grounding. All right. All right, so if somebody's hyperactive, uh, somebody's having a panic attack, someone who, you know, uh, who does a lot of talking, they need grounding. So the color brown would be good for grounding. Silver is for knitting of fractured and broken bones, slip discs, and enhancement of the third eye. All right? Black gives the color of sense of safety and security. It magnifies the um, power of attraction in the body to a level that others are pulled automatically. Right? Black is also regarded as the color of death. It increases both the immunity on powers as well as the obstacles, oppression, opposition, and uh, enmity. It activates the unconscious mind. It also generates fear, doubt, and illusion. All right? But it magnifies the power of attraction in the body to a level that others are pulled automatically. In other words, um, not just pulled automatically, but the energies are pulled to you. Automatic. This is why you see the Jews wear black. The judge wear black. Okay? When you go to a courtroom, the judge have on a black robe. Why? When you go to Brooklyn, New York, and you see all these Jews walking around with black coats in the summertime with, um, with black uh, yarmulkes and so forth and so on, and hats. What's going on? Why, why, why are you doing this color black? What's going on? Because black is the supreme color of all colors. When all colors are mixed, the color which that you would have is the color black. All right. So we talking about scanning the outer aura, and we were talking about when a person you can be. Um, in front of a person 12 feet away, and as you walk towards them, you begin to start feeling the change, a subtle change in the aura. That's when you can stop. You have reached the next auric body. You, know, you have three. You have your outer aura. You have your health aura. And you have your inner aura. So you have reached the health aura. You continue going in. Do you feel another subtle change? Then that change means that you have reached the inner aura. All right? So it's about 12 feet apart from the subject with the palms facing the subject with the arms slightly out reach. Slowly walk towards the subject, simultaneously trying to feel and sensitize your fingers, your hands, as I told you, subject out or auric field, concentrate at the um, sense of the palm while scanning, also at your fingertips. Stop when you feel heat, tingling sensation, or slight pressure. You are now feeling the outer aura. Try feeling the size and the shape of the outer aura. The width from the head to the waist, the waist to the feet, and from the front to the back. And in most cases, you will feel that it's like an inverted egg, the top being wider than the bottom, right? It is very important that you gradually learn to feel the aura in terms of pressure in order to be more accurate in determining the width of the outer health and inner auras. The outer aura is usually about three feet in radius, but in some cases may be more than six feet wide. Some hyperventilated children, or hyperactive children, so we have outer orbits as big as nine feet. And the health aura. After determining the size and shape of the outer aura, gradually move further in the low, still retaining the earlier position, meaning with your hands up, sensitizing. Stop when you feel the subtle sensations again. These sensations may be slightly more intense. You are now feeling the health aura. Feel the size shape of the health aura. The health aura is usually about two feet in width. 
when someone is sick, his or her um, health rays droop and are entangled, and the health aura decreases in size. Sometimes the health aura may decrease the, um, 12 inches or less. The health aura of a very healthy injured person may be as big as three feet or more, right? It usually feels like a tapering, a tapering um, cylinder, big at the top, small at the bottom, right? Now, scanning the inner auric field. You see the field, the inner auric field with one of both hands. Move your hand slowly and slightly back and forth and you feel the inner aura. The inner aura is about five inches in thickness. Like I said, between two to six inches. Um, concentrate at the center of the palms when scanning. Can't hear me. Yes. You can't hear me? No, I can hear you. Oh, you hear me? Okay. okay. I hear you just fine. Okay. I hear you just fine. Okay. Um, Ranisha, you might have to re um, refresh on um, your page or refreshing or reload. Everybody else can hear me. Yes. All right. Um, it is by concentrating at the center of the palms that your hand chakras remain or are further, further activated, thereby making your hands sensitive, um, no, sensitive to subtle energy or matter. Scan your um, subject from head to toe, front and back. Scan the left part, the right part. For example, scan the left and right ear or scan the right and left lung. When the inner aura is the um, right part and the left part of the body are scanned, they shall have about the same thickness. All right? If one part is bigger or smaller than another, the then there's something wrong with it. For instance, the ears of a patient with scanning, all right, um, it was found out that the inner aura of the left ear was about five inches thick, while the inner aura of the right ear was only about two inches thick. The patient was questioned revealed that the right ear has been partially deaf for about 17 years. All right? Um, special attention should be given the spine to the vital organs and to the major um, chakras. Um, if in any case, a portion of the spine is usually being congested and depleted, even if the patient does not complain about back problems. In scanning the throat area, the chin shall be raised upward in order to get accurate scanning. The inner aura of the chin tends to interface and camouflage the actual condition of the throat. So scanning of the lungs should be done at the back and the side rather than at the front in order to get accurate results. Nipples have too many chakras that tends to interfere with the proper scanning of the lungs. All right? A more advanced technique is to scan the lungs at the front, at the back, and the sides by using two fingers instead of using the entire hand. Special attention should be given to the solar plexus since many diseases of the emotional origin negatively affects the solar plex area, and that's the truth, all right? Um, truthfully, diabetes is an emotional disease. That's what it is. It's emotional. The metaphysical cause of diabetes is a person feeling as if they have lost um, the zest, their zest for life. They lost the zest for life. All right? They've been so bombarded. All right? So here we have the removal of negative energy and then the replacement of that negative energy with prana. All right? This is what we were just doing when you saw me do this with my wife. Um, one hand, as you see here, his right hand is dominant. So those who are right-handed, they are dominant right hand. So they're the, they are the transmitting hand or the conducting hand. Um, you have the transmitter hand, which is the receiver. Um, excuse me. You have the absorption and the trans and the um, and the gathering hand, which is the left hand here. Um, for me, it was just the opposite because I'm left-handed. So these are in your results. So let's say um, in scanning your patient, you notice that there's a hollow or protrusion in some areas of the person's inner aura. When the area is hollow, this is caused by pranic depletion. 
right? So this is pranic depletion here to the left. I mean, excuse me, to the right. That's pranic depletion, all right? Affected parts depleted of prana, and there is insufficient prana in the affected area. The surrounding five fine meridians are partially or severely blocked and fresh prana from other parts of the body freely and um, vitalize the affected part. The pranic depletion, the, the affected chakra is depleted and filled with dirty, diseased bioplastic matter, and usually it is partially under. Right? When the area is protruding, this is called the pranic congestion or bioplasmic congestion. This is bioplasmic congestion, which is on the um, left side, and pranic depletion is on the right side. This is what this is showing you. All right? So it means that there's too much prana or bioplasmic, or bioplasmic matter in the affected area and surround fine meridians are partially or severely blocked. The excess prana and the bioplasmic matter continues to flow out freely. This congestion matter, um, bioplasmic ma uh, matter, becomes devitalized and diseased after a certain period of time. Um, fresh prana cannot flow in freely, or its inflow is greatly reduced and devitalized matter cannot flow out freely, or its outflow is greatly reduced. In prana congestion, the affected chakra is congested and filling the disease by a plastic matter. Usually it is partially overactivated. And affected parts may be pranic congestion and also pranic depletion simultaneously. It means that a portion of the affected part is hollow and the other portion is protruding. For example, a liver is congested and protruding on the left portion and is hollow and depleted on the right portion. Another example is the portion of a of a um, heart, of the left heart is congested and protruding, and the portion of the right heart is severely depleted. All right, the smaller the inner aura, the more severe the pranic depletion. All right, the bigger the protrusion of the inner aura, the more congestion is the affected part. All right, the smaller or bigger the inner aura is the diseased part and the more severe the sickness. All right, so we should know that an area may be a temporary pranic surplus, in which case there is nothing wrong with it. For example, a person who has been sitting down for a long time may have a big protrusion of the inner aura around the buttocks area when scanned. Since the surrounding marine is not blocked, the condition normalizes after a short period of time. Or an area may be um, temporarily pranic reduction, in which that case there is nothing wrong with it. An altercation that has been just occurred is likely to cause a temporary pranic reduction around the solar plexus. After a few hours of rest, the condition will normalize. Habitual um, um, altercations and anger may cause pranic depletion around the solar plexus with results in abdominal um, ailments and possibly heart disease. Right. So that's why I said that you got to focus on your solar plexus because, you know, anger is stored in the liver. That happens to be right there at the solar plexus. The physical condition of, this, of the, um, and remember, he's told you before that one minute outburst of anger shuts down your whole immune system for six hours. So the physical condition of the um, pa patient should be carefully observed and the patient should be thoroughly questioned in an interview before jumping to any conclusions. As stated earlier, disease manifests in the bioplasmic body before manifesting in the visible physical body. There are cases with pranic depletion and pranic congestion in the inner aura of the affected parts, but medical examination will show a negative result or a part is normal. In this case, the disease has not yet manifested in the visible physical body. Therefore, pranic healing should be applied to the disease before it can manifest physically. All right? So this is an example of what we was doing here. Coming down the front of the body, right, left, and taking all that negative energy, bioplastic energy, and putting it into the tree, plant. Right, here's another example. 
so after you seen, uh, just like you seen me do a general sweeping, right? You can do localized sweeping. I mean, now you can focus on an area of the body where the person might complain about having a situation or a problem. Okay. In which that you can place your hands, um, hand or hands above the affected part or area, slowly sweep away the disease, bioplastic matter. You know, and as you've seen, it just simply moved the hands. Okay. So, for instance, one practitioner was sweeping away the congested bioplastic matter at the back of the head of a patient and part of this transfer to the neck and shoulder area. This caused the pain in the back of the head to partially move to neck and the shoulder areas. Should you encounter a similar situation, you should apply localized sweeping to the new affected area. And um, how many times should generalized um, sweeping or localized sweeping be applied on the patient? The answer is many times as required. There's no fixed number. I apply sweeping once to twice and localized sweeping four to five times. However, in the case of a dog dying due to an accidental intake of slow acting poison, it's necessary to apply general sweeping and localized sweeping 20 to 30 times per session since after each sweep, the partial removal of the darkest, um, darkest gray bioplastic matter from the dog. This darkish gray matter will reappear after a few seconds and leave after a few minutes. Sweeping and energizing was, a, um, was applied alternatively. This whole process was repeated once every two hours, three times a day. It was continued for next four, a few days. Thereafter, two weeks, the dog became relatively active and healthy. In case of poisoning, do not try to use um, only any healing. Get medical, um, get proper medical treatment and apply pranic healing to strengthen and facilitate the healing process. As stated earlier, a disease or illness can be caused by internal or external factors. If the cause is malnutrition, obviously um, enough nurturing, um, nurturing food and nutrient-to um, supplements should be taken by the patient. Since um, chemical poison is, your, is a physical and external or an external factor, that one should definitely use a physical or chemical form of treatment. Pran killing should be also used to minimize the damage done to the body and to greatly facilitate the healing process. In the case of the dying dog, the poison was always or already fully assimilated into the system, and the veterinarian did not have any antidote. Therefore, pran killing was used alone because it was the only solution available at the time. Although there was probably some great yogi, shaman, or healer who could neutralize the poison in the body, um, in their own bodies, in the body of other person whom um, among us belongs to this caliber, or who among us belongs to this caliber, all right? In praying and killing, as well as in other physical activity, one should be fully aware of one's capabilities and limitations and should use sound judgment and common sense in making these decisions, all right? So this is a method of energizing the palms of the hands, simply taking your thumb, and put it in the center. I'm going like this. All right, we talked about doing a Mr. Miyagi. Or monkey clap. Right? So your hand is now active, so now let's practice the Egyptian pose. And as you see, 
you're going to draw the energy down. It's going to go through your arm, into your heart, out through your other arm, out into the patient. All right? Visualize the color that you want to impress upon them. Okay. All right, here's some more poses of the Egyptian poses, as it's called. So it stabilize the projected prana. What is the potential problem with prana healing is the instabilize the stability, the stability of the projected prana. The projected prana tends to gradually leak out, causing possible regressions and causing the illness to reoccur. So this particular um, this potential problem can be handled by thoroughly cleansing and sweeping the part of the tree of the treaty to be treated and to be stabilized into projected energy. The projected prana, excuse me, can be stabilized in two ways. You should finish all energizing with prana by projecting blue prana. Okay. Then it's done by visualizing and projecting light blue prana on the treated part. You can also just wield or mentally instruct the prana, project the prana to remain and stabilized. You can perform this experiment um, to prove to yourself the validity of these principles and techniques. Right, here's another technique. We spoke about how to remove the negative bioplastic energy. As you, sh as I showed you, we use the plant, an aloe vera plant. The diseased bioplastic matter has to be disposed properly in order to maintain a um, bioplast um, plasmatical um, clean room and to avoid contaminating yourself and other patients from this dirty bioplastic matter. The diseased bioplastic matter, when removed from the patient's body, is still connected to the patient's by bioplastic threads. The Hawaiian shaman healer or the kahunas called the bioplastic um, threads visible, aka threads. In esoteric um, parlance, it is called the etheric threads. Unless the disease bioplastic matter is removed is properly disposed, there is possibility that it may go back to the patient. To make a bioplastic waste disposal unit, simply get a bowl of water and add salt to the water. All right? It can be um, um, clairvoyantly observed that the water is capable of absorbing dirty bioplastic matter and the salt breaks down the, bi the dirty bioplastic matter. After sweeping and cleansing, you should flick your hands toward the bioplastic waste disposal unit, all right? You can perform the simple um, experiment. Get two bowls of water, put one um, bowl, um, you know, with salt in, of course, and then another bowl with no salt. Scan the two bowls before and after the disease bioplastic matter to each bowl. The disease or dirty bioplastic matter can be obtained from sweeping your patients. Um, Leave the bowl for two hours and note the difference. You will notice that you can hardly feel the disease bioplastic matter in the one with the salts, but you can still feel it in the one without the salts. 
Right? Some healers use water, sand, water with tobacco, meat, and other organic material or matter as bioplasmic waste disposable units. Some South American Indians use twigs. The twigs are put in the mouth of the shaman and disease bioplasmic energy matter is sucked out and extracted by the use of the mouth. The twigs are used to catch the disease bioplasmic matter. The disease bioplasmic matter is clairvoyantly and symbolically seen by some clairvoyants as spiders or insects or other repulsive forms. Some shamans do not place anything in their mouth. They simply suck out the disease bioplasmic matter and dry vomit it out. All right? Or it's seen in the movie Green Mile, if you remember. For beginners, there's the dangers of literally swallow, um, swallowing um, the disease bioplasmic matter before it's safe to use sweeping. This time, following schedule should be practiced for at least 12 days. This is to prepare you in case that you suddenly need to hear somebody such as your own child. Um, this practice should in, um, enable you um, to heal simple cases like fevers, loose bowels, <coughs> movements, and pain, muscle pains, insects, and bugs. Right? Sensitizing the hands five to ten minutes a day, spinning <coughs> five to ten minutes a day, general and localized sweeping tender. Um, um, minutes per day, energizing with prana, 10 minutes per day, pref uh, preferably um, these techniques shall be applied on actual patients. It is, this is not possible to get a friend or relative to go to practice on. If you're not one of those few who are not able to exercise your hands on the first session, you should proceed to uh, sweep and energize with prana. Continue the practice of sensitizing your hands. You should be able to accomplish it in five to four sessions. All right. Um, basically, you should be able to accomplish this in three to four sessions, which is sensitizing your hands, which you should be. Everybody should have already felt that the first session, actually. All right? It's advisable to go to heal simple cases first before going to more difficult cases. It's necessary in order to gain experience and confidence. It's preferable to heal at least 30 similar cases before trying to heal difficult um, or severe cases. All right? Three things to avoid in print healing. Doing um, energy, uh, energizing the eyes directly. They are very delicate and are easily overdosed in the prana for direct energizing. This may be damage to the eyes in the long run. The eyes can be energized through the back of the head and through the areas uh, between the eyebrows. This is the chakra uh, energy center. In each of these locations, it is safe to energize through the anger. Um, chakra in these areas between the um, eyebrows. The eyes are already sufficiently energized. The excess prana just flows to the upper parts of the body. If not directly or intensely energize the heart for a long time, it is quite sensitive and, too, and delicate. Too much prana, right, too intense energizing may cause severe pranic, all right, congestion of the heart. The heart can be energized through the back of the spine near the heart area. Right? And energizing the heart through the back, prana flows not only to the heart, but also to other parts of the body. This reduces the possibilities of prana congestion of the heart. If the heart is energized through the front, the flow of the prana is localized um, around the heart area, thereby increasing the possibility of pranic congestion. Um, do not apply too much intense um, prana on infants, very young children, right, or those under the age of seven, or very weak and old patients. Uh, 
Okay. Too much prana, too intense energizing has a choking effect on the chakras. Um, similar to the choking reaction of the very thirsty person who um, drinks too much water in too short of a time. The ability of very weak or old patients to assimilate prana is very slow. This type of patient should be energized gently and gradually. This should be allowed to rest and assimilate the prana for about 15 minutes to 20 minutes before you attempt to energize them again. If the solar plexus energy is suddenly over-energized, resulting in the choking effect on the chakra, the patient should suddenly become pale and may um, have difficulty breathing. Should this happen, apply localized um, breathing immediately to the solar plexus. All right, the patient will be relieved immediately, and this type of um, case is rare and is um, presented to show the reader um, what to do in case something like this happens. All right, so these are some of the steps in healing, observe and interview the patient, scan the mind and vital organs, major organs, and affected um, parts, apply generalized sweeping, localized sweeping in the affected area. We scan the affected area in such a pranic congestion scan to determine whether the congestion has been sufficiently reduced, right? For pranic depletion, scan to determine whether the inner aura of the affected part to be a little bigger or has partial normalizer. For such cases, sweeping and cleansing is sometimes sufficient to heal the patient. Energizing the affected part with prana. All right. Give feedback for the patient. If there is some um, pain left, ask the exact spot to rescan. Do more sweeping and energizing. All right. If the part is highly over um, energized, do distributive sweeping to prevent possible. Congestion. All right. Rescan the tree um, area to determine whether the affected part has been sufficiently dis um, congested or energized. The third is the key to the um, dramatic healing and the very fast healing. In pranic congestion, cleansing is emphasized. In pranic depletion, indigestion is emphasized. All right, from all that pranic energy, bioplastic energy on you, washing both hands up to the elbow should be thoroughly washed with water or salt water before healing, after sweeping and after energizing. Right? This washes away some of the disease bioplasmic energy or matter left on the hands. All right? And also reduces the possibility of absorbing it into your system. Otherwise, this may be... Um, as much pain in your fingers, hands, arms, as the patient's symptoms may manifest in the body. Wash is also necessary to prevent bioplasmic contamination of your next patient. Your hands should be, should preferably be washed with germicidal soap to reduce the possibilities of infecting yourself, the healer, or the next patient. All right. Critical factors in healing. The patient must be scanned, rescanned thoroughly and accurately. Correct bioplasmic diagnosis um, will lead to correct treatment. Proper rescanning will also um, correct feedback as the efficiency uh, or the efficiency of the initial treatment. The patient's bioplasmic body must be thoroughly cleansed and Rate of the healing and avoid, all right, um, radical reaction. The patient must be sufficiently energized with prana. Insufficiently energized means a slight improvement or slow rate of healing. Over energizing a delicate organ um, must be prevented to prevent, must be avoided to prevent pranic congestion. 
stabilize pranic, um, projected prana to prevent it from escaping and leaking out. Many new healers become overconfident and commit to serious mistakes um, of any stabilizing rejection that um, prana when the patient tells them how the condition has greatly improved. As a result, some patients immediately recurrent, um, refer, reoccurrence of symptoms and um, ailments after about 30 minutes, 30, and after about a few hours. Therefore, being um, stabilized to project the energy after the energizer. Right. Instruct your patients not to wash the part that has just been treated for about 12 um, hours. Otherwise, the symptoms may occur, reoccur. Water off some of the pranic energy that um, has been projected to affect the part. Patients suffer from severe illness or general weakness. Right. From a bath for 24 hours of the treatment. Right. This, in, this enables the body to gradually absorb and simulate the energy that has been projected. All right. Materials such as silk, rubber, leather tends to act as a partial insulator to prana. Patients should be requested not to wear silk, making it uh, difficult to project prana with them. Okay, so um, sometimes if you wear leather and if rubber soles, what happens is cut off about 30 to 50 percent of the pranic energy. And so what some healers do, they remove the shoes. Um, especially if you're outside, you can actually just be on the grass um, or either wear your cotton socks. You know it's fine. All right, for distance scanning, the ability to scan a patient at a distance is something that has to be gradually developed through regular practice. In order to learn this, you need to do the following. Every time a patient comes to you for healing, don't scan the patient with your hands and don't interview him or her immediately. Let your patient sit in front of you, close your eyes and try to psychically see and scan the bioplasmic body and visible physical body of your patient. Looking at the chakras um, from the crown down to the feet, pay attention, close special attention to the major chakras. Are the chakras being grayish, muddy, red, black? Try to scan them also. They are thick, thin, or just normal. You may imagine you are scanning with your hands. Look and scan the important organs from Top to bottom. But don't look, um, do they look good or feel good? Do they look too reddish or too bluish? Look at the spine from the top to bottom. Do you feel any obstructions or slight dislocation? You do. Um, it says right here, you do not have to see clearly or very lucidly in order to be accurate. Being able to see or scan vaguely will be good enough. Relax. Do it slowly. Be thoroughly. The patient will not mind waiting for a few minutes. Open your eyes. Get up and scan the patient thoroughly. Interview the patient. Evaluate the conditions of the patient. 
and compared to the findings from your psychic scan. It is difficult that you um, will achieve some degree of accuracy even on the first try. Continue practicing until you become not only relatively accurate, but very accurate. This may um, result, um, require at least several months of practic uh, regular practical training or practice. Um, proper and effective treatment um, depends upon accurate scanning. Try actual distant diagnosis and scanning first on patients you have treated before. Then gradually try it on patients whom you have never met. Get a picture of the patient to help you establish a connection with him or her. All right, so distance, cleansing, and energizing are a lot better and faster to learn. There are two methods that you can learn. Do pranic breathing, which of course, 616-7171-6363 um, um, or empty retention. All right, visualize the um, patient in front of you. Do not visualize the patient as far, very far from you since this would tend to condition the mind that your entire endeavor is very difficult. Visualize or imagine that you're applying general and localized sweeping of the parts to be treated. Dispose of the bio disease or bioplastic matter by visualizing a fire, all right, in particular a violet, a violet fire or a ball of light as bright as the sun um, beside you and disease matter being thrown into it. Continue cleansing until the treated part looks brighter. Energize the affected um, chakra part to be treated. Continue energizing until the um, treated part looks quite bright and healthy and until you feel the treated part has enough prana. You just simply feel the patient has enough prana or treated part is fully already full and is no longer absorbing um, prana. You can get up, open your eyes, scan the patient to determine whether he or she has been properly treated. If not, repeat the entire process until the um, treated part has been substantially improved. Wash your hands after the treatment. All right? In front of you, close your eyes, visualize a bright ball at the top of the, pa um, of the patient. Visualize a stream of white light washing the head area and gradually going down and cleansing the entire body. Gathering the disease bioplastic matter and dispose of it properly. Visualize the grayish matter in the affected parts of becoming less dense and lighter until it, becomes, until it comes out and see it is floating out. The disease bioplastic matter can be disposed of by willing it to disintegrate immediately or by visualizing grayish matter as gradually thinning out, or you can simply visualize a fire and throw the disease bioplasma matter into it. Energize the affected part. This is done by visualizing a ball of light, pranic ball, being formed and projecting it into the affected part. So let's do that. So our hands, let's create a ball. Do the pranic breath. All right, open your eyes and rescan the patient. Get further treatment if required. The difference between method one and two is the method one prana is being drawn into the body of the healer before projecting it to the patient. And method two, prana is drawn from the surrounding and projected and projected directly to the patient without passing through the body of the healer. You can also come in, um, combine method one and two after you have become proficient. You can try healing familiar patients at a distance, then you can Gradually try new patients. All right. Um, are there any questions about anything that we've gone over um, tonight before we go? All right. 
All right, so let's do that printing bowl once again before we go. Okay. Okay, so work with that for the next few days and begin to start putting that pranic bowl or whatever you need for it to be at because the same technique is actually taught within Qigong. It's called the Qi bowl, but in pranic killing it's called the pranic bowl. And you can place that energy anywhere or throw it at anyone in which that needs healing. All right? All right, any questions? No, thank you. No, thank you. All right. Uh, I'm going to send out this presentation to everyone. That way y'all can practice on the, and learn the science of the colors, and that way y'all can utilize the colors also. All right? And I'm going to say peace to everyone. Peace. Peace. Peace.